comes into the mouth. This is the oral cavity. Right, so this structure right here is the oral cavity, the space. It's behind the teeth and above the tongue. The next structure is the tongue. Right, so the muscular tongue is here. And then in white, this is the hard palate. And back here with the muscle and the fat, this is the soft palate. You have the epiglottis, which is here. You have this whole entire space in the back that's the pharynx. Each section has a special name. Between this point and essentially the end of the soft palate is the nasopharynx. Behind the oral cavity is the oropharynx. Behind the entrance to the larynx is the laryngeopharynx. Food passes through the pharynx. It's going to come down to the esophagus. It's going to enter through the cardiac region, through the cardiac sphincter, and into the body of the stomach, which is here. These wavy structures are called rugae. The portion of the stomach that is above where you see my hand, this rounded region above the attachment of the esophagus, that's the fundus. This whole outer edge is called the greater curvature of the stomach. This inner is the lesser curvature. You come down, and this region of the stomach is the pyloric region. And right before food, chyme, moves into the duodenum, there's a pyloric sphincter right here. Then you have the duodenum, it's the first part of the small intestine. The pancreas coming across, which is going to add in pancreatic juices. I'm going to remove this section so you can see this a little bit better. The duodenum attaches to the jejunum, which is all this squiggly region in here. You get down to the very end of the small intestine, and this last little section is the ileum. So this section right here where it kind of comes straight up. This valve in between the ileum and the cecum is called the ileocecal valve, and it actually has number, I think, 15 on this model. The cecum is this rounded C-shaped region of the large intestine. The appendix, or the vermiform appendix, is here. The large intestine is also called the colon. And you have the ascending colon, closer so it's climbing, it's coming up. Transverse colon. You have the descending colon. And then when you get back in the back, there will form an S shape to the colon, and that's called the sigmoid colon. From there, we have the rectum, the anal sphincter, and the anus. And the other structures that we have on this model are the liver. I'm going to turn this a little bit sideways so you can see up underneath it. The gallbladder. The cystic duct is a large duct that comes out of the bottom of the gallbladder. So right there. The hepatic ducts right here are going to be smaller ducts that are attached to the liver. There's generally two on our models. And where those guys come together and form this structure that comes all the way down to the duodenum is the common bile duct. So this is the common bile duct right here. All the way down it's going to dump bile into the duodenum. Okay, the green line. Green line, yes. Okay. Yeah, everything generally associated with the gallbladder or bile is green on our models. Okay. So that helps too. Okay. Now, we missed a couple things that, that are on these models that are not on that one. <clears throat> the salivary glands, so you have the parotid gland, you have the submandibular gland, and then you have the sublingual gland. Sublingual is below the tongue, submandibular is below the mandible, parotids in front of the ear. Okay. okay got back together a little bit. There's not much else exciting on this model other than the esophagus and again the sigmoid colon is down here at the bottom. Digestively that's about it. You ready? Yep. On this model it has a good parotid gland. It has an okay submandibular gland. I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay. Uh, esophagus again. Pancreas. Duodenum or duodenum, your, your, your choice on pronunciation. That's about it for that. The model I like best for the sigmoid colon is this model. 
because you can really see the S here or the bend, or the curvature of the colon. So this is the sigmoid colon. The minute you start to see some muscular tissue, you know you've reached the rectum. Right. Um, the little constrictions, the gray squares in between each area here, these are called the hostra, and they help to make fecal pellets. Okay. Um, really good also, this model, I like this one a lot, the hostra are really well defined. The only difference here is with this model, so if you imagine this in place, this is the ilium. Again, I could have this as the ileocecal valve. Okay. Cecum. Appendix. They bent it on this model. Okay. Let's see. Now, let's go back and look at these. Um, you know, this is not the best model in the world, but if I run out of models, this is the pancreas, this is the duodenum, and that's the common bile duct. Again, it's green. This is the gallbladder, this is the cystic duct right here at the bottom, these are the hepatic ducts, and this would be the common bile duct coming out. Okay. Jugenum, right, so all that squiggly, that's a technical term for that squiggly <laughs> intestine. All right. Let's see, we covered the stomach pretty well, I think, and did a, did a pretty good job. Really, on these models, the only thing that I'd have you identify, maybe greater and lesser curvature of the stomach, just that it is the stomach, that might be it. I'm going to do the greater omentum, the fat pack, okay. and the mesentery on the cat. Did that? We did this one. All right. We've done the stomach really well. Um, you know, somebody put this model out, and that's not such a bad thing. All right. I didn't actually show anybody this, but this shows you the rectum here as well. And this is the last part of the colon, but this is the rectum. All right. Okay. Rectum anus. Other than that. Then we have the teeth. Oh, good. We have one that actually has a full set of teeth. That's kind of nice. With the teeth and the four types of teeth, what you want to do is you want to find the center of the center of the jawline. Okay, on the center of the teeth, you should have two incisors, and they're pretty sharp and pointy. And then the canine, which is really pointy, it's next to them. Then you have two premolars, and then you have three molars. Okay, and that should do it. I think that's it. Thank you. You bet.